This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, the red letters say it's me, Alex, the white letters, the name of the show, The Ramble. And here we are coming to you live and direct from New York City, if you're listening to us as we broadcast every night at 10.30 at night, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, and it's good to have you aboard, and uh, you know, we're, uh, we're kind of uh, changing something up tonight. You know, we started putting uh, Phil uh, on um, Mondays uh, to join us uh, for these uh, little gatherings. And um, so I, uh, I decided maybe I should have somebody from the left side, because he's right wing, uh, do the same thing on, say, Thursdays. And uh, look who we have here, somebody who swore he was never going to be here again. Let me get rid of that person in the waiting room there. Okay. Hello, Robert Natali. How are I've you? Lost, I've lost my picture. I don't know where you are or oh, what's really? going on. Oh, really? You've lost yeah, your picture? Suddenly, my Zoom just went crazy. Can I dial you back? Or? Yeah, sure. You can do oh, that. Oh, wait. There we go. Oh, there we go. There, there we go. There, there we, we go. go. Okay. Uh, this is the first time we've, we've done this little thing, so I've... Uh, uh, I've actually had to uh, change a little something here. I had to add Robert Natali's name to the uh, to the thing, and I, I didn't get it in the right place. Now I got it in the right place. Nah, get it up a little bit. There we go. Let me see here. There. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. See? Hey, in uh, tribute to my good friend Charlie Wallace, I wore a T-shirt tonight. It may be old, but I got to see all the. I may be old, but I got to see all the cool bands. That's true, actually. Uh, yeah, it's true. I mean, it means you're getting a little old, you know. Oh yeah, no I doubt. I mean that you're you're kind of like saying, I don't like the new stuff. That that isn't totally true i don't what i don't like is pop music that you hear on america's got the uh, hot on whatever those shows are called yeah i i actually go seek out new music once a week i have a sort of time frame that i like to go seek new music and there's a lot of good new stuff out there that i listen to regularly like so, like what Oh, geez. I mean, there's uh, I just recently my son turned me on to a band. He was somewhat of a musician. He turned me on to a band named Tame Impala that I love a great deal, for example. Mm -hmm. um, there are numerous bands out there. The problem is that the music industry isn't what it was back when you and I were kids, you know. Oh, I see. OK. Yeah. You know, it's far more difficult for bands to to get a foothold these days without the yes. old-fashioned record contracts and such. So yeah, well, like for instance, who who? Uh, by the way, I got I got to do something here. You know what I did? Um, I uh, how do we spell Natali? N A T A L E L E. I had mm -hmm. I E. Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with a little tur change here, boom. Wait a minute. Yeah, I just oh, there it goes. Hey, okay. Now your name is spelled correctly. Excuse me. It means anyway. Christmas in Italian, actually. Okay. Buon Natale. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, look. So my question to you is, so what are you listening to? What the, what's the new stuff that you've heard that you like? Again, a band called Tame Impala comes to mind. A band called Zero Seven I love, actually. Um, what kind, what kind of stuff? They're really new, new. Yeah. They're maybe... 15 years old but they're still putting out stuff here and there mm -hmm. um and so things like that uh, on occasion i've even dipped into what's known as house music yeah um i just listen my goal is always i don't want to be the kind of guy that still listens every single day to the same shit he listened to back in the 60s that's that's the goal well i don't listen to any of my 60s stuff I, I really don't. And I don't listen to stuff that's in the 70s. 
and I don't listen to stuff that's in the 80s or the 90s or the aughts or the tens or now the 20s. That just about covers it. No, I listen. <laughs> I listen to Sinatra. You know, Sinatra's Sinatra's forbidden in my home. Actually, why is Sinatra forbid, forbidden in your home? Um, my dad, on the side, mm -hmm. uh, used to sing in nightclubs in his younger years, and he constantly uh, put in our heads that if you wanted a voice, don't listen to Sinatra. Listen to that King Cole. I disagree. And, I did. I, and I, when I, I grew up, yeah. I I had to agree with him, and I still do. I disagree. Uh, I don't think there was a most more perfect interpreter of song than Sinatra. I think that uh, that Nat Cole was a lot of of uh, part of, part of his vocal talent was smoking. And if you don't believe me, he used to say to people, "I don't want to quit smoking; it'll change my voice." You know, I don't. I think that the the how can I put it? I find that I like Cole, but I find that everything that Cole does is exactly like everything else Cole did. You know what I'm saying? Whereas Sinatra kind of changed it up, you know? And, he and could I feel sing. exactly the opposite way. I can't stand that Sinatra just obliterates numbers well, to, I'll tell to my you, way of thinking. See, I disagree with you. I think I can't I listen to him constantly. I'll tell you though who was the greatest, and and I I didn't say this originally. I I said that you know the greatest of all time was Frank Sinatra. Blah 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 blah. My friend Shecky said, go back and listen to Crosby. Mm -hmm. I agree. With and Shecky. I went back and listened to Crosby, and was just blown away, and blown away by the fact that he could sing anything. He, he, you could give him a country song, he could sing it. You could give him a religious song, he could sing it. You give him a jazz song, he could sing it. I mean, he could sing anything you put in front of him. Yep. Uh, so while we're sitting here arguing about Cole versus Sinatra, probably oh, we should give all the props to uh He's to, right to there in my mind, yeah. yeah. Now, kids, if you're listening to us right now, don't we sound like two sleep. really old farts? Well, yeah. he's a young kid compared to me. Yeah. Like, how old are you now? I'll be 71 next month. Oh, really? That old? Yeah. Really? I yeah. thought you were at least 80. You look it. Anyway, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. no, but uh, uh, I, uh, uh, kids, we are talking about artists you never heard of, you know? Um, somebody said to me, what was the, what was the thing they said to me? Uh, you know, that there are kids out there. Okay, I'll give you a good example. There are kids out there who probably right now do not remember um, or know of John Lennon. Yes. Okay? Now, that sounds, I know all of you who are listening, you're probably going, what? They don't know who John Lennon is? You've got to remember, John Lennon died how long ago? Close to 40 years? No. Is it, uh, well, let's see. He died in, I was at, uh, Wasn't I started it? working in San Francisco. I went back to San Francisco and started working there in 1969. So I think it was 69. Well, wait a minute. Echo, when did John Lennon die? John Lennon died on December 8th, 1980 at the age of... 1980. Oh, I 1980. Excuse me. I, I meant... 80. <laughs> Why not go 69 for it? See, I can't, all of it becomes kind of a mishmash. That's 40 years ago, Alex. That's 40 years ago. Yeah. So all you got to do is have a 30 year old kid and he doesn't know who John Lennon was. However, you know? I'll tell you this, and it probably surprises you. I have a, only one child. He's a son who mm -hmm. recently turned 33. Mm -hmm. He was in a band. In fact, the band was good enough to have played the bitter end over 40 times. They, wow. they, were, they were pretty wow. successful for a time. Yeah. At any rate, um, I got to know his bandmates and a lot of his friends from that same generation. Mm -hmm. And Alex, you'd be shocked that they would sing Beatle tunes and know them word for word. They would sing Zeppelin. They were wearing Yes and Emerson Lake and Palmer t-shirts. They were fascinated by Hendrix, by a lot of the music that came 
out of the sort of Woodstock. Well, era. I mean, look, there are kids today who do go back and listen to the past. As a kid, my father played me a lot of musicians that I that I didn't grow up with. You know, me too. And me and too. and he taught me to go back and listen to things before I was born. And so I became fascinated by stuff that was out before I was me born. Me too. And and so I got an appreciation for that. However, parents don't inculcate their kids with that kind of thing anymore. But you should know what went on before you were younger. And there's a lot of stuff out there. You know, I I always said I love movies. Okay, I, and everybody says I love movies because I got them on my, you know. But they don't really love movies. If you love movies, you will have watched some silent films mm -hmm. because they were some of the best films ever made. Sure. Now, if I were one of those kids that went, I don't know what goes on before I was born, I would have never seen a silent film and I would have mm -hmm. missed out on some absolutely great, great films. Films like Sunrise and... Uh, um, uh, what was it? What was it? What was the film? Uh, oh God, this von Stroheim film. Uh, my mind's a blank right now. But I mean, I miss, would miss out a lot on a lot of those films. And I sat down and started watching a lot of silent films and going, I've just missed all this wonderful stuff. So if you go back before you're born and check into that stuff, you're going to find some stuff you're going to be amazed by, you know. And it's going to make you a fuller and richer person, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, I grew up on Glenn Miller. I didn't know who the fuck Glenn Miller I, was, I but my like, father yeah. played him all the time. And yeah. so I was familiar with his music. I listened to Benny Goodman. For that yeah. matter, I also listened to opera because my dad was an opera buff. And I can't say to you that I listen to opera now in my later years, but I have an mm -hmm. appreciation for, you know, for... Yeah. The talent that it took to make some of those. Well, uh, my father operas. was a working musician. Mm -hmm. Okay, working musician, and uh, I, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I, a terrific working musician, and he worked with some of the best over the years. I mean, he played with Nelson Riddle whenever Sinatra would come to town, mm -hmm. and he would, you know, he played the opera, he played the ballet. Uh, he was a journeyman musician, you know. Mm -hmm. he, have violin will travel will work any sure. job that comes along dance bands in san francisco and so on but he always taught me to hate opera <laughs> because he hated opera he loved the ballet but he hated opera because he said i just don't understand why they got to sing everything they can say you know uh it it just he thought it was corny mm -hmm. so i never got an appreciation for opera because I was just told, eh, opera sucks. Let's go. They take me to the ballet, right? Mm -hmm. Now that's good, you know. So, uh, and, and, you know, uh, my, my father taught me a lot about music and uh, uh, I think gave me a pretty good ear for music. You know, I have perfect pitch when I sing. I don't go, I don't do clams, you know. I'm yeah. not a great singer, but mm -hmm. I, if I'm going to sing, I don't sing out of tune, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that was that was that. Hey, listen, I'm the gonna only, take a what? The only music that was really taboo in my household was country. My father always used to joke that if you played a country song backward, the guy's car would start up and his dog came home. Or yeah, yeah, that's the old joke. Like that. You know something? I I would have agreed with you until one day I realized. I said, hey, I've got my little iPod, and, and what do when when a song comes on on my iPod or my now my iPhone. What do I stop and, and listen to? And I found that I loved country music without knowing it. Hmm. That I really loved some of the stuff that was being done, you know? I love bluegrass, you know? I love the people like the Dixie Chicks I thought were extraordinary. And I find that I listen to that stuff. So all of a sudden I realized I'm actually a bigger fan of country than I ever thought I was. Hmm. Anyway, I got something for you. Uh, uh, Robert is doing this th this way, and I hope he doesn't do it for that long and comes back to the main body of the show only because I have these other people also that go on like bubbles and so on and so forth. But the reason he's on, well, explain why. I'm by himself. Explain why. You felt hurt, right? Well, yeah, I don't know that hurt's the word. I mean, there were, there were three 
I thought there were three things that occurred, and I'll go over them briefly. Um, Phil and, and I... And please, folks, don't think he's a whiny bitch. Okay, go ahead. Phil, Phil and I kind of had a run-in when I returned to the show, and look, I was more disappointed that I, than I was hurt. I think him resorting to name-calling was unwarranted. Mm-hmm. I, I go back to this. When he and I had the... We would go back and forth politically... But when we had our little wager about the election, mm-hmm. I thought it was a cool idea to offer him a, an olive branch and and offer not to accept the winnings and have them donated in Ronnie's name, if you recall. Mm-hmm. And that was my little way of just offering an olive branch by way of saying, look, yeah. we're, I'm not going to lord this over you for the rest of your life. Right, exactly. It was all in fun, mm-hmm. but, you know, I... I hope that we were going to get past that and have it be like not something that constantly mm-hmm. got brought up. So I guess when he started with the name calling, I was more disappointed because I know in my heart that he's he's a better person than that. Well, he actually and, is. And I yeah, no, I believe yeah, no, and that. And I, I, and I, I actually and if, like him on a personal level. I do. Yeah. Um, the, the incident where the next night Tony started name calling I, I would just like to say this directly to him and that is tony i'm an italian american nobody understands the relationship between a mother and son in an italian american household like i do mm-hmm. if you pay close attention i don't do the wallpaper behind me <laughs> i don't make the wallpaper <laughs> jokes I don't make the how you made your living taking care of your mother jokes. I just don't because I never, and I'm not criticizing yeah, those. I that do. do. I do. Well, yeah. I don't criticize those that do. To me, it was sacred ground, and I just don't feel comfortable doing that. Mm-hmm. When I had the transcript here of what I said to Alex in our personal chat, and somehow Tony got the idea that I wrote you to tell you that I tried to call in but couldn't because Tony said this or Tony was doing that. That wasn't the case. I have the transcript No, I, here. in fact, I don't think that's what I said. I said that that you didn't call in because you listened to it and it wasn't serious and it wasn't, you know. And, I you, and you heard Tony doing a few first. things and a few other people doing a few things. And you just didn't feel like calling in. First things first, I wrote you to say hello. I didn't write you to tell you why I didn't call in. That would have been stupid. Mm -hmm. I wrote you to say hello and to say that I could be calling in the near future because an assignment that I was working on Mm -hmm. was coming to an end. And all I said was, in fact, I was going to call the other night, but the show felt like I would have been jumping on a 60-mile-an-hour train. Okay. All right. and, And I absolutely would agree with you because I remember the night you were referring to. Yes, but I didn't mention anyone by name because it wasn't about well, anyone Well, we, we've, got, we've gotten it Tony. It was simply, yeah. the show was doing well enough and I would have jumped in and I probably would have sat there and not kept pace. So, Tone, you know, I, if, if okay. you thought I ever said anything about your mom or about you and your mom, I feel badly, but I know in my heart. I, here, I'll no, begin no, you on didn't. you. I don't I'll know. I'll swear okay. on my mother's head that that didn't happen. Okay. You know, it wasn't about. But, but you said to me when I was talking to you the other day that uh, all it would take to come back on the show is an apology from Tony. I don't need an apology from Tony. I just need sort of like him to nod his head and, 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 well, and well, make me understand that he appreciates that it was well, never well, my intent okay. Okay. to hurt him. Yeah, right. Now listen to last night's show. I did. Oh, you did. did. Well, let me let me just play it for the audience. You'll just okay. hear you'll just hear the audio. Okay, here we go. So who's gonna be on the show tomorrow? I sort of caught part of that. Oh, Bob Natale. Robert Natale. Okay. Robert Natale's gonna be here tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, yeah. You know, then he doesn't have to be assaulted by Tony. No, don't start Tony. Don't start no, Tony. I'm apologizing. Uh, you apologize to him. No, to you. No, I said Would you apologize to him? It would yes, mean sorry. a lot to him. What? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Say it. Say it. Say it. Wasn't say it, Tony, say it. it was Bill that he say got it, out. Hold on a second. Say I apologize. I apologize. For what you said about Bob Natale. For what I, I okay, forgot what I'll, I said. I'll, I'll tell, tell him that tomorrow night because that's what he wants. Okay. So... That was Tony, it. let's let's go sit over a Sambuca. We'll find out we have more in common than not. 
I do want to leave, though, probably, with this one. Wait, probably you will find you have nothing in common with Tony, because I don't have anything in common <laughs> with Tony. I, I, I find him to be a good guy. Yeah. At the, the, the third thing that happened on that same second night yeah. was an individual on the show. I mean, this was a source of great laughter in my house. Someone on the show, no names mentioned, called me a backstabber after I left the show. <laughs> I can't write shit funnier than that. I really can't write shit funnier than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I hope you will become part of the program again. But, you know, as long as you want to keep doing this, we will. But I, I'm going to have to start cutting down on some other people in order to do it. So Let's do one more and then I'll jump in. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I just wanted, to begin with, I just wanted to solve the problem between you and Tony, and it was it was solved, actually, last night. I, I sure hope so. I have you know. no ill will toward Tony, and I hope he doesn't have ill will toward me. Yeah. And hey, I got one topic for your show tonight. Oh, okay. I was reading yeah. that the drought out west in the western United States mm -hmm. is so bad. How bad yeah, is, is it? it? They actually found, I thought this was phenomenal, they found the wreckage of a plane at the bottom of a lake in California <laughs> that had been missing <laughs> since 1986. That was in the Times. I didn't make this shit up. Well, you can't make that shit up. But, no. Yeah. Um, it's pretty bad out there. Yeah. It's getting, it's getting lousy. And uh, this could be a thing. You know, like, this might not just be <laughs> temporary. Uh, just like a lot of things. I don't, th you know, I don't think that um, uh, COVID is temporary. Yeah, neither do I. I think it's going to keep mutating and mutating and yeah. mutating and mutating. And we're going to have to be one step ahead of it, you yep. know. But, uh, uh, it, you know, I mean, people are, I mean, how dumb are people? They're not getting their shots. And then those states where they're not getting their shots... They're dying like crazy. Yeah. You know, I don't understand it. Did you get a chance to watch the clip I sent oh, you? With yes, I did. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about that a minute. Uh, this weekend, <laughs> Donald Trump held a rally. Where was it? In Vermont or? In Ohio. In Ohio. Yeah. Okay. You can look up the YouTube. It's Brian Williams. A Trump. I forget how it's it, it Trump does a rally and people walk out of the rally. Well, wait a minute. In yeah, rows. This is this is what's happening. To begin with, not a lot of people showed up. No. Not compared to most Trump rallies. No. Right? So then he goes, uh, he starts giving his speech, and he, then he starts going after the same old things. Mm -hmm. And then they start showing the audience. And right. they're leaving in droves because he's But so the thing is, he's reading the teleprompter, and because it's Ohio, he wants to throw a prop to Neil Armstrong. Yes. Oh, and oh, what oh, he means yeah. to say is that a brave young man from Ohio went and planted a flag on the moon, but he doesn't. He says a brave young man from Ohio goes to a plant. <laughs> it's like, what? I think he was reading his teleprompter, oh, but yeah. he wasn't reading it well. No, not, no, he rarely does. He struggles with Probably that. whoever wrote it said... Uh, uh, planted a moon on, uh, planted a uh, flag on another planet or something yes. like that, yeah, right, and he right. saw it as plant. Uh, I uh, I watched that and I said, but, but the stuff before it, uh, we tamed the West. That was yeah, one of his things. Yeah, that was good too. You know, and then we we fought the Taliban or something like that. Yeah. I mean, two things that well, just have nothing to do with each other. I mean, the man is just grasping at straws well what what i thought was hysterical was brian williams saying he went to a plant like a rhododendron or a philodendron or any kind well, of dendron well then he said you know you should you, you should think of yourself as just being you know like somebody who's doing summer stock now you know yeah. he's no longer a big actor so you do yeah. dinner theater yeah you know it's, it's kind of what he's ending. doing it's, you know a sad ending uh, and you know what he's doing next, what Trump's doing next? They have a big WMA match out in Las Vegas or something, and the guy who is the one of the fighters invited Trump to come to it, and so he's going to go there, and other people are going to be there, like uh, 
uh, the Kardashians are going to be there, and you know, it's whole, fitting, right? A whole bunch of people, N- not because Trump's going to be there, but because they were going anyway. Yeah. And so Trump is going, and people are wondering he's going to Nevada, uh, and uh, this is a state that he has vilified for not voting for him and to having him recount ballots and things like that. And they, they're just wondering whether he's going to get booed. And he yeah. doesn't like to go anywhere where he gets booed. He always goes someplace where the crowd is pretty well vetted. Well, I thought, I thought the clip I sent you was very telling at the end of the clip, watching people while he's speaking, leaving in droves. Now, that isn't to say that people still don't support him. But what I think it does say is that that the fire is somewhat diminished you know like that his popularity is eroded to a large extent well you know it, it's like i've always said people are big stars until their series is canceled yeah and then all of a sudden they're not stars anymore yeah you know they were only stars when they were on a hit tv show but now that it's no longer on the air yeah. but who where where are they i don't have no yeah. idea what they're doing you yeah. know see eric estrada it, yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 a good example I mean, some of them do make it, but what I'm, you know what I'm saying is yeah, that your sure. popularity is based upon your presence in the media. He has not been present in the media now for six months. That's right. And, um, uh, you know, people are, people are oddly enough kind of forgetting about him, losing their passion for him. American attention span you, you know, isn't, isn't wonderful. I mean, they, maybe they like what he represented, although mm-hmm. how can you like what he represented? What was that all about? Far be it for me. You know. But anyway, um, so your life's going okay? Your health is good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, COVID didn't really affect me because I'm very, my interests are very cerebral mostly. So it affected my wife greatly. She's the type likes to get out and so on. Not so much me. I read a great deal. So my wife is so social. How social is she? She's so social. That I've had, you know, every morning I wake up, I don't know why, but I wake up with some kind of negative thought, like, is this the day I'm going to die, or how many more years do I have to live, or what's, you know, I'm, that's the way it's been lately, when I wake up in the morning. And the other morning I woke up and I thought, if she goes before me, I won't have anybody to talk to. You know, except you have I mean, my number, Alex. I, I have your number, but I mean, basically, outside of my friend Shecky, I, I have no friends. Where if I die tomorrow, she's got all these girlfriends and yeah. stuff that she can associate with. I'm a lot the same way. Well, I'm not the most social human being. You nor nor am I. I have find. close friends yeah. and lots of acquaintances that I really don't stay in touch with all that greatly. So yeah. Yeah. I'm very much to myself, and I'm very cerebral in my pursuits, and so COVID really, in effect, didn't bother me much at all. Yeah, well, I uh, during COVID, uh, I just stayed indoors and didn't see anybody, and that's pretty much the way my life is anyway. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know, uh, I wish it were better than that, you know. but Yeah, uh, at times I do as well. Anyway, I'm going to call this quits so we can go sure. talk to our citizen panel. It was great talking and, to you. And, uh, yeah, oh, well, it's a delight talking to you. I, I, I was so disappointed in thinking that you would never call the show again. And so, so was I, I. So I had to figure out some way to get you back into it. You and know? you did a great job of it. I appreciate the the extension of this offer. And, um, and, and let's I'll do it again be, next Thursday. Let's do it again next Thursday. Okay. Okay. And then okay. We'll, after that, we'll see what you want to do. You know? Hey, best to Trucker Steve. I want to offer oh, my, my yes. best to him. Yes, we didn't hear from him last night, so I'm kind of worried about him. You know, right. But Trucker right. Steve, if you're out there, you're listening, uh, you might just give us a quick call just to say mm-hmm. you're okay. You know? I'm thinking about your buds. Oh, it's, look, you know, any of us who have faced any kind of illness yep. understand what that's all about. Yep. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Be, be well, Alex. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, friend uh, and uh, compatriot, uh, Robert Natale, uh, who this was the way I could get him on the show. Okay, so I'm so happy that we were able to accommodate it and uh, and do it. And uh, how do you like the new background I got here? Yeah, there is the, uh, where is it? I, 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 so, oh, there it is. There's the Chrysler building right there. I can't find the... Um, 
uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the um, Empire State Building. I don't think it's in that shot. And here's one of these big, tall buildings they're now building. These I call them pencil buildings. Uh, and they're kind of ugly. But that's just me. That may be the new skyline of New York, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be wonderful. Anyway, let's bring in the citizen panel, what we have here. We only have a handful of people to start out with, but who knows? So we may get more as time goes on. Uh, there they are. There's uh, Brian Neary, and there's Alan, and there's uh, Charlie Wallace, and here comes Jeffrey Stein. Uh, he'll be joining us shortly. And, uh, you know, Paul, folks, if you've never called this program before, you can call. Simply go to gabnet.net, G-A-B-N-E-T dot net. Okay. And uh, just uh, uh, over on the right-hand side in the middle of the page, in the right-hand column, it says click here to Zoom. You just click that, and it'll, just, it'll put you here, and you'll be part of the citizen panel. Very simple to do. John Larkin is coming in. We had the usual suspects tonight. Uh, although were you, you were, were you here last night, Brian? I don't think so. What? 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 Wait a minute. Oh, I got turned. I, I was not. I was not in a good mood. I was doing some parenting, and I was listening to the show. And you guys are going on and on and on. And and sometimes, yeah, you just don't want to hop on because things are flowing. And and yeah, you sort of, you know, I wasn't in a good mood, so I listened a little bit. Well, I mean, you weren't in good mood, but you, you said you were parenting. Did the two have something to do with each other? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nice. I give my kids ultimatums. Yeah. You know, I tell Adrian, either you're going to eat your dinner yeah. or you're going to be crying yourself to sleep tonight. You're going to eat your dinner or you're going to be crying yourself to sleep so Does tonight? that mean you take your cell phone from her? No. No. What, would, what, what, what does that threat mean exactly? That means that I mean, she doesn't eat because she's watching or something that she gets yelled at. And I just say, go to your room because she's not eating. So she's just, you know, typical kids, they snack too much during the day. So yeah, cut all those off today and eat oh, dinner. Oh, so, I see. It was the snacking during the day that uh, filled yeah, her up. Yeah, yeah, you know, a little here, a little there. And, you know, kid, their, their stomach's so small. So Yeah, and, yeah. and what, was she, what was she feeding herself with? Candy? Uh, no, like yogurt, you know, yogurt things, the yogurt sticks and, you know, all those. You know, if I things. were a parent, I don't know about you, but if I were a parent, who am I to speak? You know, I never had any kids. But if I were a parent, I think I would uh, not let my kids have sugar. Yeah, yeah. They, our kids don't <laughs> have any sodas. So like Coca-Cola, see, Charlie, you're a bad influence. Yeah, yeah, but but you 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 can give them diet soda, you know. No, no, they don't have any soda. They, they don't have, have any soda at all. Why? We have water, and then we have like winter melon tea, well, what some about, Asian what, 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 teas. What, what, what about this? This is like sparkling ice uh, water, just water. Oh yeah, that's fine. You know, yeah, but not flavored not the sugary water. stuff or Gatorade, you know, the, the all that sugar stuff. So we've we've had a lot of. Uh, those health days at our company and you know they have the health day and they have all the sodas lined up and they have yeah. the little bags of sugar for each one. <laughs> yeah. oh, to, oh to show how bad it is. Yeah so I haven't had so well I've had soda like you know like a vodka you know coke or something like that but uh, 2009 is when I stopped drinking sodas like cokes and all this. I stuff, don't so. think I put sugar in my system for <laughs> at least maybe five six years. No wonder it's so cranky. Oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, but the Coke, you put a lot of Coke in your body <laughs> for those last years. I put Coca a lot of Coke in my body, but it wasn't, the, it wasn't the soda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one goes up to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, can I ask you guys a question tonight? Sure. So, so, so like the last two days, man, you know, a uh, lot talking about mental illness stuff. Last two days, I've shown you guys the view. You know, we have we have a sidewalk across the street, and it sort of goes up a little ramp, and then there's the fence, and then there's a little track mm -hmm. that goes around that area, and then there's all the soccer fields for the school. Yeah. So there's been an older gentleman. The first day, like three days ago, he was like raking that 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 walking area, you know. And now the last two days, I've seen him for hours going out there and gardening. I mean, like on his 
you know, sitting down with a rake and with stuff and, and like with his hands and getting up the stuff, really bizarre. So, I mean, you know, I know, I, I, you know, something's, something's wrong with him, but you know, what, what do we do about stuff like that? I mean, I really want to go up and talk to him and, and see what's going on. But, you know, it's just one of those things where you never know how someone's going to react. And I don't know if anybody else has had those kind of instances happen. But I know mm-hmm. he's going to be out there tomorrow. And he's just sitting in his little spot and he's cutting cutting the lawn and cutting, tr- cutting all the little weeds out there. Mm-hmm. And for hours. And using this equipment that makes noise. Yeah, he had a blower. He had the bl- oh, he had the blower. little stuff that he was using, and then a little rake, and then he had a little blower. And he's just working on these little sections. I want to know, what, explain to me the what a blower does. Because, okay, you've clipped, you mowed your lawn, and you've clipped your clippings, and now you've got this blower, but where are you blowing the stuff to? Like on the lawn. I mean... It, what, yeah. the next door neighbor's lawn. I, I guess you just yeah. want. I guess you want to do the blower along like concrete yeah. and stuff to clean it I off. I mean, Larkin, you see that stuff all the time. And I, I, I've been in the Tenderloin area when I used to go to Ruby Sky all the time. And there are actually some homeless people that I knew because they used to always be there. I'm wondering. Right? I'm wondering if yeah. there isn't something you could do to like get even with them. You know. I mean, thank you I'm, I'm, I'm the kind that wants to get even. Okay. Huh? With who? No, this With guy's who? doing gardening. He's mentally he's not there. Mentally he's just sitting there for hours, you know, sitting on his butt like gardening stuff. So he's not hurting anything. Why bother him? Yeah. Well, because it's noise. The noise is starting to get to him. No, not the noise. It's just seeing that that, that you know that person is not well. You know. But well, well, anything. look, look, look. We're all crazy. Uh, and and uh, he he's crazy in uh, his own way, but you're crazy. You're crazy with cars, right? And your pinched nerve. Well, forget that. That's another problem. That's getting old. old. That's hanging out with you guys too much. Just have Starting a conversation have with them. Huh? Just have a conversation with them. See yeah. what's up. Yeah. Say, hey, I like your garden. You know. Do it from a safe distance, Brian. Yeah. Somewhere I'll be where, the fence. yeah, somewhere where you can't get attacked with one of his yard tools. Yeah. So I mean, I I just don't I I'm, I I I think I think it's just he may be a little nutty that way. So what can getting I say? Low, getting older, getting lonely. Maybe the guy is a gardener for the school district and and retired or something. And, Wants to still do no, but what he's saying is it's almost a mania with him, right? He's doing it like eight hours a day or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's something mentally. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not easy. I'm gonna just... talk to him and I'm gonna ask him. Say, hey, did you hear about Alex Bennett? Have you ever heard of Alex Bennett? No, but <laughs> let me ask you this though. The, you guys gonna say that's why I'm crazy? My question is, does he um, um, uh, is he meticulous in what he does? In other words, he yeah. manicures everything and he goes yeah, back. Yeah, that. And he looked, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, well, he's probably, he, where gardening is concerned, he's obsessive compulsive. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, what are you going to say to him? You can't say anything to him. Hey, I think you should see me- seek medical help. You could offer him a bottle of water to break the ice, and so to speak, and start a conversation if he wants to talk. See if he'll come into my yard. Yeah! I was just thinking <laughs> that. Maybe you get your yard done cheaply. See? See? Yeah. That's the bottom line. Now we know your uh, motive here, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Last weekend, I saw a guy arguing with a guardrail. What? I was at the corner, and there's a guardrail going around, and this sort of sinks in, and yeah. he's sitting there talking to the guardrail. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll tell you, COVID has caused a lot of problems. <laughs> you know? Oh, uh, man, that's incredible. That's incredible. I want to know if the guardrail was at, uh, you know, talking back to him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, gee. Um, wow, that's hmm. interesting. Where is everybody now? We only got five people here. Uh, I say only five people. Some people would be happy to have that many, you know. Uh, but it's just been, been very quiet this week. I think it, once we past July 4th, it gets quiet for a while. Mm. Always mm. has. Uh, uh, by the way, Charlie, Texas, a lot of things happening in Texas. 
Oh, yeah. Your infection rate is jumping. Yep. Uh, surprise. Huh? It's a surprise. Well, I mean, it, it's going up because, number one, the variant, the Delta variant, is in, in, in play. Yep. And your, Texas is not heavily vaccinated. Yeah. No, Austin is, but the uh, rest of Texas, no. No. Wow. Uh, and then they also, isn't, the, uh, isn't your uh, assembly or legislature or whatever trying to pass uh, voting rules? Yeah. To... Uh, Abbott call, is calling a special session. Mm -hmm. Legislature ended for two years last May. Mm -hmm. But he's calling a special session so they can come back and pass all <clears> the <throat> voter restriction laws. That he wants passed. Yeah. What are some of those restrictions? You well, can't. You can't be a Democrat. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, no and voting they, on Sunday. And, and they can be votes after it's all over. <laughs> What'd you say? They can change the votes after it's all over, and you know. Yeah, well, that's I, one I'll of the tell you something. When you say no voting on Sunday, Sunday should be yeah. the day we vote. So everybody has a chance to go vote and doesn't have to go to work and get, yeah. and give up work, you know. Well, you know, the black churches, that's what they do. Everybody goes to church and then when church gets out, they have the buses and they Well, I think we, I think I think we just figured out the reason why they don't want voting on yeah. Sunday. You know. Exactly. I mean, I I've often felt that we should have one day, you know, they they they've talked about if we could I think make every month a 30-day month if we just took one day and didn't make it anything, okay? And then what we should do on that day is that should be voting day. And we should encourage everybody on that day to go vote, you know. But uh, I don't know, it's just, it's just amazing to me that, that, you know, the people are trying to inhibit people from voting rather than encourage them to vote. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense at all. We've always m talked about, hey, go out and vote. Make sure you vote. It's good for you to vote. And they made it easier and easier for you to vote. Oh, well, that's good. It's not bad. You know. Well, we just had a pretty big earthquake. When? Just this moment? Just now. I didn't feel it, but apparently it was a 6.2 in Stockton. What? Yeah. Wow. There, yeah. There's another one earlier. Yeah, a couple yeah. hours ago there was one, too. I, I saw one this afternoon. Yeah. Uh-oh. We lost Alan. Maybe he got hurt in there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I take that back. This was four hours ago. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, four hours ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was earlier. We just lost Alan. Maybe there was another one out there. Well, he's out near. He's in. <laughs> Alan kept texting me saying, is Alex okay? He was only on the show for 21 seconds last night. You know, when, when, last night he texted me when you were out. He kept texting me. Hey, when, you know, when all of a sudden I, I go on for 21 seconds and then I'm not on anymore, it doesn't mean I drop dead. I know. Okay? I kept saying he's okay. I just saw him for 21 seconds. He goes, but I just hope he's okay. In fact, that 21 seconds was during the period of time when we run ads at the beginning of the show or promos yeah. at the beginning of the show. <laughs> and those are all on automatic. Okay? I could go out to the kitchen and come back and those things would still be playing in, in the order I set them up to play. So, I mean, I, all of a sudden people were worried, is something wrong with Alex? <laughs> oh no, what's Boy. wrong is I pushed a wrong button at one point and didn't realize I had taken my streaming of the show off. And uh, I, it's not like a big red light goes on here or something when it turns off or whatever. Uh, and uh, uh, so whatever. Uh, Alan is coming back. Shall we let him back in? I'm going to message him. Are you okay? Are you okay? Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Here, here he comes. Here you, he comes. you remember? Wait a minute. I, uh, Alan, I, I, Alan, 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 are you okay? Alan, are you okay? I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> my computer. Uh, no, it wasn't you. It's my computer rebooted. No. My, well, who's got the audio going? I think you got oh. the audio from the show going. Or Hear it? Alan. Alan does. Alan. Uh, Alan. No, we didn't have it. So Alan. Can, can you hear me, Alan? I hear you fine, Alan. Yeah, well, why don't you turn down the audio from your browser? 
you okay? How are you okay? <laughs> Uh, and, and you know that that 21 seconds i was just glad you didn't start picking your nose or something remember remember benny hill remember benny hill they used to do that thing the news and then they come back to the news and it had half some girl on his lap or something the worst oh. part was that the first 21 seconds was a picture of me because i i had the wrong yeah. thing up and so yeah so maybe it's when i took my picture off and went to the the gabnet logo that it uh, that it changed something i don't know i don't know what it is zoom had an update just now i guess and was nice enough to reboot my computer for me in the middle of a zoom meeting well you know you can prevent that from happening you know i i hate yeah. well that's i'll tell you that's what i hate about uh about microsoft windows absolutely is you have a windows machine yeah, yeah it automatically just, decides, hey, you know, it's time for you to update this thing. We're going to reboot your machine. It doesn't yeah. ask you first, hey, are you doing anything right now? Windows 7 used to ask you. Hey, you know who I've had it with? Let me, let me, let me gripe. I, I love to be able to gripe here. Uh, here here's the deal. Uh, I have had a problem. Amazon has started their own delivery service. And every time they deliver eight times in the last two months the package has said has, they said was delivered and then it was wasn't here mm. and it never got delivered and every time i complained to amazon remember the old days with amazon if you didn't get a package they said oh well i'm we're sorry about that that it didn't get there did you look everywhere yeah i looked everywhere well listen uh we'll send you a new one and if the other one comes just be our guest you know okay fine now they tell you well you know sometimes they mark things as being delivered when they weren't delivered and we ask you to wait for 24 hours but i've had to do and then after 24 hours call us back and and ask for your refund or whatever and i'm going wait a minute i gotta make a second call you can't just you know let me do it online or something no i mean so i today i i i get a hold of them and i say this package didn't arrive today and they gave me the same crap and they said we were sorry for the inconvenience and i wrote them and i said if you were sorry for the inconvenience you wouldn't inconvenience me well we're sorry about that then there's another one and i'm suddenly realizing what this person is sending me back in the chat room are a series of pre-programmed responses. So I said, would you mind not responding me with the pre-programmed responses, please, and, and talk to me directly? We're so sorry for your, and another one sent. And I'm going, I'm just trying to keep this person on as long as I possibly can. Hell, I'm an old guy. I got nowhere to go. I can waste this person's time. And so I just keep going on and on. No, you don't care about me. If you cared about me, you would give me my refund right now rather than asking me to call, get a hold of you again tomorrow. Uh, did, it, did it ever occur to you that you're talking to a bot? <laughs> no, in this case, I don't think I was talking to a bot. I think I was talking to somebody who had a bunch of pre-programmed templates that they could just, you know, cut and paste and put in there. And it, it response A, response B, well, then. So I just kept him going to see how many of these responses. And finally, he started, the person started repeating the responses and I and finally they said, "Well, have a nice day," and they hung up on me. <laughs> but I tried to see how long I could keep them going. I hate Amazon these days. You know, they're just they're just a pain in the ass. You know, here comes uh, here comes Herb Jackson, star of the Intersection, uh, fine program Herb, that follows Herb this Jackson. one every night. Yep, not his real name. Uh, but uh, he probably can't hear us yet. Can you hear us, Herb? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, oh there we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, Jack Bishop, excuse me. Whatever Jack name Bishop. you're using. Jack, you know, well, no, you've got Herb Jackson on your yeah. on your Zoom. 
well, somebody else did that, and I'm trying well, here, to... Well, here, hold on a second. I will, I, will, I will do some magic for you here. All right, well, I tried doing it here. Okay, uh, rename. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, look, see, Jack... You wanted, the, you wanted to use the last name I used in San Francisco? Bishop. Or do you want to use the last name I used in Dallas, or what? Wait a minute, here we go. There we go. It's Jack Bishop now. See, I changed it. It's magic. See? Wow. Hey, I heard you complaining about Amazon. You think you got it bad? There's a company that I've been doing business with for 25 years, ordering things from them. I ordered something more than two months ago. And I have been trying to get them to respond because A, never got it. B, got a letter said you got it. Got a letter that said, we've checked it, you got it. And I'm going, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I mean, isn't you know, it... girl, girls gone wild? They they've been they've been kind of late, Jack. I think that's what we're talking about. <laughs> no, but down here in Texas, a sheep gone wild, son. Sheep. Oh, sheep. A anyway, no, but I mean, it, it, the thing that got me gets me about Amazon. I I finally said to the person as I was typing stuff in, you used to be a once you used to be a once you used to be a great company, and they were. I mean, I really love doing business with Amazon, but lately. It's like they built a rocket ship or something, and they got to pay for it. Oh, wait a minute. They did. Anyway. Um... <laughs> did I say something about Amazon, Alex? Sure. Well, you're probably calling a regular customer service number. No, so no. I did a chat. This was a chat. This one today was a chat. Oh, okay. So they have, they have a business owner's customer service for people that sell stuff. And... Somebody was nice enough to give me the number. It they call it Amazon Logistics. Yeah. And I'll give you the number right on the air. Well, no, no. What, what, what do I need to call Amazon Logistics for? This because thing was coming from Amazon. You get really good customer service with them. Why Why that in, 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 as opposed to just trying to get customer service? Who the hell knows? Because your call is very important to us. That's why we're keeping you on the line for the next 20 minutes with endless advertisements. Yeah, yeah a Charlie. Yeah, you know, when I order something from Amazon and they say it's delivered, they always show a picture of it sitting on my doorstep. Yeah, sometimes, not every time. The times it doesn't arrive, there's no picture of it. <laughs> Only oh, once was there a picture of it, and I could tell what right. building it was left in. It wasn't left in my building. But that was only one case. All the other times when they say it's been delivered, there's no picture. You know, hey... How you hey, doing? Hello. <laughs> and backing out of the room very slowly. Don't have a Coca-Cola. You'll be okay. <laughs> you can see somebody never raised well, kids. What would you, you say, Brian? I, did, couldn't, I couldn't hear you, Brian. I think your mic isn't on. Are you on? No, there we go. Yeah, oh, no, okay. I muted because she asked me a question. Oh, yeah. I just said that, yeah, she's... she's she wants something, so I said, as long as you say hi to everybody, so that's why she had to say hi. Who was that? See the control you have, Alex? You have control. Who was that? See, was, that told... a, was that Adrian? No, that was no, uh, no. Stephanie. That was Tiffany, yeah. That was Tiffany. Stephanie. I thought it was Tiffany. Stephanie. 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 Oh, that was, oh, I thought oh. it was your wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, really. Well, she probably. looks young. She looks like she's thirteen. Come on. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know the, I don't know the first time that you put Adrian on here, but the pictures you've been sending lately, I've seen her grow up already. Dude, she passes out, and I have to carry her into her room. She's like fifty or sixty pounds now. Oh my god, yeah. getting old. Yeah, but and I mean, when you were I mean, younger, that was no big deal. Am I right? When you first dead. showed her on the program, what was that? A year ago, maybe? Oh yeah. Yeah, no, she's growing like crazy. Yeah, she she's becoming more of a young woman, you know. Um, pretty soon, slow you know, down. I I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you a gift, a baseball bat, so that when the guys start showing up at the front door, you know. Yes, Jack. Hey, he he's got nothing but pain ahead. <laughs> uh, nothing but pain. Well, he kind of has a preview of it because he has two other kids that came with the marriage hmm. and yeah. and and uh, one of them is a girl and one of them is a boy and i think i don't know how you can tell and, and let me ask you this what's easier the boys or the girls <laughs> who are you asking i'm asking brian the, i say the boys no uh, answer for that really my uh, my uh 
second oldest granddaughter is now 32 years old. And as soon as puberty hit, it was like girls gone wild. And now she's got a 12 year old of her own. Oh. And, and she called me up a few weeks ago and said, Grandpa, I want to apologize to all the boys <laughs> that I caused you. And, 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 and you know what she said? One of these days you're going to have one just like yourself. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but Brian, can you say which one is the most problem in that respect? I mean, after last night, no. Because don't you become a little more protective of the of the girls in the family, and more go get them to the to the boys. Uh, they all have their quirks, you know. So they're yeah, they all have their quirks. How about you, Jeff? What what did you find when you were raising kids? Did you find the boys were harder or mute. the girls? Unmute. 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 Unmute, uh, Al, uh, Jeff. Oh. There we go. Uh, Jeff, just unmute. There yeah, we go. Okay, I'm on yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I, I heard a, a great story about my, um, my sister's granddaughter, mm -hmm. who's like four years old right now. Mm -hmm. And she goes to a little class in the afternoon mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know what they do there. They play and dance and who the heck knows what they do. Mm -hmm. But there's boys there and, and other things. And she comes into this to be picked up by her mother and the first thing she says to her, I didn't have, I didn't do anything bad today. <laughs> I didn't do anything. That's the first thing she said. She says, well, what do you mean? Did you did, do something bad? Oh, no. Not today. And not today. <laughs> <laughs> but don't ask well, me about yesterday. Well, so she gets a little bag that she carries her stuff. And she takes a look at her bag, opens it up, and there's a note from the teacher. Oh, that's why. Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. <coughs> and then what did she do? Well, she took something she had. I think it was like a little toy or a boy, a little car or something, and hit the other kid in the head with it. Oh. oh okay. Yeah, well, yeah. all right. Uh, that'd be that'd be uh, you yeah, know that'll be that'll be cool. She'll turn out to be a serial killer. Anyway. I'll send it to prison. <laughs> yes, uh, Jack. Uh, the 32-year-old I was talking about a little while ago, you know, we raised her from the time she was four. And uh, we always knew if she came home and said, I was sitting quietly, minding my own business and keeping my hands to myself. We knew something had exploded or whatever but the best thing she ever did she was always <laughs> one of the first kids to figure out technology as opposed to her grandpa and when she was about the seventh grade you you've yet to be able to master a light switch that's true that's true you know I, i'm hoping to work my way up to a buggy whip but uh uh we got a uh a thing from uh her uh, the guidance counselor at her middle school the kid had gone into business for herself. She was offering a service to change the grades on a kid's computer-generated report card. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she was getting 20 bucks a head. <laughs> really? And she, and she could have she could have kept going, but she had a, uh, a wait, cousin. Wait, wait, wait a minute, let me ask you this. Wait a minute. Kids today, when they get report cards, see, I, I don't know this sort of thing. When they get report cards, they're on a computer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what, your parents have to go on to their computer, go to the school, and get your grades? Depending on, on the school district. Really? Really, yeah. And, and uh, the, she, the only reason her business failed was she had a cousin in the same school, and her cousin wanted the family discount. <laughs> Well, they have a thing called uh, Infinite Campus. So 
you can see your child's every class and what percentage he's getting at that time. And then you click on that and you can see every single assignment. You can see what they got on that assignment and every single test or quiz and what they got on that. Wow. Awesome. Wow. Yeah, so you see that you don't even care about the report card that comes in the mail because you've already seen everything there. Uh, yeah. If they had that when I was a kid, I would have done a lot better. If I had, uh, had they had that when I was a kid, man, I would have been apoplectic. Okay? Because I was bad enough. Look, I was bad enough with tests. Okay? I always hated tests. I always clutched up at tests. I got nervous. My hand shook so much sometimes on tests, I couldn't finish the test because my hand was shaking so much. So I, I found tests to be just absolutely um, autocratic or whatever. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. Dictatorial. Um, and uh, then years later, I read an uh, article that was written by a very, a very learned man called The Tyranny of Testing, in which he made the case that testing was not a good way to find out what kids knew and didn't know because... What you're doing is you're, at, you're, you're really what you're trying to do is program them to give the answer you want them to give. But there may be several correct answers to that question, some of which may be a little maybe out of the box. And you don't encourage that when you're testing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. One of the oh. things we have oh. here in the state of Texas, and the schools admit to it, they teach to the test. Uh huh. Yep. That's what they do. No. No. But what? like, for instance, for instance, I mean, uh, I, uh, uh, I had a, I, I was in college once, and I had a teacher that said to us, "Read this uh, essay uh, uh, in the in the in the textbook, and then tomorrow we'll ask questions about it." And so the next day we come in, and the name of the article was Communism Versus Democracy. And the teacher said, okay, anybody have a comment about what you read last night? And I raised my hand. She said, what is it? I said, it, it's completely fallacious to compare communism to democracy because one is an economic form, and the other, uh, uh, democracy, is a... Uh, relationship of the government to the uh, to the to the people, and she said, "You're wrong." Next, <laughs> you know. Well, I'm I'm sorry. You can't. You it, 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 there are kids going on for the rest of their lives thinking there's a, a a comparison of communism versus democracy. If you want to say dictatorship versus democracy, if you want to say communism versus capitalism. You'd be correct, but communism, for, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and uh, I, she told me, just sit down, shut up, you're wrong. Not comparing and, apples to apples. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I decided at that point that I just didn't like what schools, how schools were teaching, because what they were doing is they were trying to get me to, if, if all I did was spit out the answer they want to hear, then everything's fine. Then you're well pre-programmed to go out into our society. But if you put a little thought into most questions, according to Banish Hoffman, who wrote this tyranny of testing, there are many correct answers to every question. And we just don't make a bit, we don't really relish the fact that certain people go outside the box and look for another answer. Mm -hmm. You know, but anyway. Back to you guys. So, you know, if you have a problem with tests and your handshake, get out your iPad when you were a kid. That would solve the problem. Uh, I oh, wait. oh, wait, they didn't have iPads. They didn't have iPads. iPad. <laughs> I wonder yeah. how many of the people on this panel, and I may even carry this over into the intersection, uh, Charlie Wallace, Jeff Stein, myself, Alex, certainly. Remember when the uh, Pledge of Allegiance changed? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they put for God or something in there. Under God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Under God. And you tell anybody in school today that that changed when I was in the third, fourth grade, 
Hey, Coach, it's always been that way. It's always been you that You know way. when it changed? And the reason? I, oh, I know the reason. I can't remember the specific time it changed. President. No, it, was, it wasn't a president necessarily. No. Uh, 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 John Larkin, answer? No, no, I didn't have the answer. I was, it was, I was just going to go ahead. Definitely the answer. What it was was it was the 50s. And co concurrently, do you remember what we had in the 50s? Sure. Oh, McCarthy. McCarthyism and the Red Scare. Right. right okay. Right. And, okay. And, and so consequently, they added that during the Red Scare. And, and they added, uh, I think at the same time, didn't that's when we began to see in God we trust on our currency? No, I think that was always there. I think that was in the 30s they put that on. Yeah, course. yeah. Doesn't it, doesn't it say on the money, in God we trust all others pay cash? <laughs> oh. you, you remember <laughs> um, you remember when we used to get underneath our uh, yeah. our desk when the, yeah. uh, you know, for the, the uh, nuclear bomb tests? Yeah, that was for the earthquake. Yeah, you used to have to put oh, your no, that hands. was for the uh, bombing thing. It was for a bomb. Yeah, yeah you used to have to put get under, your, un, under your desk and put your hand behind your neck. Okay, yeah, I, and, I and I yeah. often said to uh, I often realized years later, I'm sorry, they probably just find some guy dead with his hand around his <laughs> neck under a desk. Yeah. I went so to school. I, I, I got I got uh, slapped around when, when by in a public school when I was in sixth grade because uh, I, I said I'm not getting underneath that desk, and and I was only in sixth grade and the, there was a, a male teacher and he says you better get underneath that desk. And I said, I'm not getting under it because it's, it, it, I don't want to be underneath a fucking de you know, a desk when a bomb comes and blows, blows up the place. So he fucking he slapped me. Do you, do you want to know the, the, the big myth that I heard for years? And this is what you always did when it happened. And you say, we just had, you just had an earthquake out there in California, right? Yeah. Did you feel it, by the way, Kevin? Yep. Was it big? Two of them. Was it big? Two of them. Uh, it was pretty good. I was sitting in my chair, and it was pretty good. It rocked around a little bit. It was up on Carson, actually, on the Nevada border. Oh, really? Oh, okay. 6.0 6 downgraded to... No, 6.1 downgraded to 6. Oh, wow. downgraded to 6. Yeah. 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 Uh, There's actually been, like, 10, supposedly. And they had one just about a half hour, 45 minutes ago up there, too. Yeah. Well, the thing that what did they what did they what did they always tell you when there was an earthquake where to stand? In the doorway. Yeah. Yeah. Worst idea in the world. Pretty much. Yeah. It's not going to save you. Get the hell out of the building. You Get know. in the open. Uh, in the open. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, under the door. Well, then the door jam comes down and kills you. We used to have earthquake drills at a chemical plant full of gases. Oh, great! Wow. <laughs> I said the only the only ER program we had were tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. Tennis shoes because you just start running. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Well, anyway. So um, anyway, I'm boy, I'm tired tonight for some reason. I, Me it, too. That's why I got a cup of coffee. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, you I'm know what would have been interesting? I think talking to Robert. Is if you, you you had said that he was writing a book, yeah, it would have been interesting to know what this book. Well, he was wasn't about. writing a book; he was writing articles. Oh, you said. Oh, a book. Okay. I thought it was a book, but oh. it was articles. Okay, no problem. It's okay. I just I was waiting to kind of hear about his book. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to get Robert on the show tonight because uh, because I I I like him and. Uh, you know, he feels a little shy about coming on here because of the way he was, uh, he felt assailed. And uh, I told him, don't worry about it. We got, we got Tony to apologize. And I'm, and I'm sure yeah. Phil would be happy to say, hey, I wasn't, I didn't mean anything by it, you know. I mean, Phil's a good enough guy that way, you know, he doesn't want to cause trouble. That's why we've isolated him. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's in the prison. What do you think about? Oh, by the way, uh, uh, two people made an emergence. Uh, of course, Trump had a rally, as we were talking about over the weekend. Uh, what if he held a rally and nobody showed up? Would that be a rally? That it, it looked very sparse, and about halfway through his speech, people were leaving in droves. They had video. They heard of it. it all before. 
huh? They'd heard it all before. Uh, they said, oh, I, I've heard this song before. Let's leave, okay? I think what happened is my roommate was there and he passed gas. That's why it really burritos lasted. you had last night? What? Yes, those were good burritos, by the way. They, they had no beans in them. No beans in the burrito. Well, you know, Jack was having the trouble finding the light switch to turn the intersection on last night. So I went and got my bean burritos at my girlfriend. Uh, bean, sorry. Beef burritos at my girlfriend. I was in the middle of eating one when he came on. Your girlfriend gives you beef burritos? Yeah, she makes them. And, and she loves you? Yeah, they're beef, not bean. No, yes. but she loves you, and she's feeding yeah. you burritos. At least we don't have to have cans of orange spray Shouldn't, on either side uh, of that. Uh, uh, no, no offense meant here, but oh, okay. shouldn't she be feeding you lint? Lint? Yeah. It's not fattening. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that joke good. went over like most of yours. I'm sorry. Anyway. Uh, what happened to John Larkin? When I was in uh, <clears throat> I was at Lock, uh, Lake Don Pedro last week, we went to a couple of coves, and they had Trump people there. They had they had boats with Trump flags, and they said they have some other new saying now, mm -hmm. and uh, they had a fuck Biden, big fuck Biden flag, and everybody was just shaking their heads. Did they sink each other like they did over in there in Texas or wherever it was? No, I don't know. They stayed... Everybody stayed away from them in the cove. <laughs> it's pretty funny, but <clears throat> but they're you know they're still out there and they're still bragging about it. I'm sure down Kevin's way they'll still be on the you know on the overpass and they're getting ready for his reinstatement in August, right? So oh, my phone's plugged in. I took a couple pictures the other day. It was hilarious. Yeah, they, he's still got a base out there. I, I think I don't know if people are think maybe it's not you know 70 million, but. But there's still a big chunk of people that are loud and proud about it. Yeah, but I think that slowly but surely, as I said earlier, once you don't have a TV series on anymore, they forget you're an actor, okay? Uh, the same thing's true of him not being president. Uh, yeah, there were a lot of people after he lost, fair and square, that uh, made a big stink, and then all of a sudden they're kind of going, I forgot, you know, they're not paying that much attention to Trump. He's trying to stir up a lawsuit, which is going to be worthless. As well, before. people have tried that lawsuit with Facebook yeah. and those it's, outfits it's, it's before, a, and it's never, never gotten anywhere. Didn't he mention it's unconstitutional for them to do this uh, uh, for Facebook? Yes, and, and it has nothing to, to do with it. It's the hottest spell constitution. A Facebook, I mean, those are probably nothing to do with it. They have nothing to do with the Remember who his attorney is now. But I, I still think these guys who are, who are going around still white, waving their flags are going to still spark up people when it starts coming down to it. I don't think the people who voted for Trump are saying, oh, I'm not going to vote for Trump next time. Yeah. I think when people start waving the flags again and getting on the freeways again, it's going to spark those same people up. They but, never went away down here in Texas. Exactly. By, the way, the, by, by the way, did you hear what was Michael Avenatti? Was that his first name, Michael? Yeah. Uh, just got sentenced to two and a half years in prison mm. yeah. for his little extortion wow. deal with uh, <laughs> Nike. Yeah. So. That guy really fell, you know. I mean, when he, everybody thought he was going to be like uh, the, you know, the big savior. Remember, he oh, was. Oh, they, they were talking uh, about president. him uh, running for president uh, and president, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, he went down fast. Very fast, and and by f being found guilty, I don't think he can practice law anymore. Can he? Uh, Thanks so. on. Yeah. yeah, it's gone. In most I heard people, Washington D.C. jumped on the bandwagon with Giuliani, like New York. They revoked his uh, his uh, Washington D.C. bar license or something. No, no, like no, that. Not, no, not his Washington D.C. bar license. They, they, they. Uh, stopped him from practicing law in the state of New York and his okay. law firm. He did that in New York, but they also mentioned yesterday Washington, D.C., too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's been suspended. But all it's these guys the are going to wind up working a drive through at Denny's, you know. <laughs> Remind me not to go to that Denny's. Yeah. Uh, but and the, the Kraken lady, that Kraken attorney, you know, the, yeah. the weird lady uh, that goes on Fox all the time. Yeah. Oh. No. Sydney Powell. What's her name? Powell, yeah. Sydney Powell, Powell. Yeah. She she has to show up to a, a sanction hearing for for her bullshit that she pulled. 
So she's going to get sanctioned. Well, I've got a question. Okay, here, here's the big one. Let's talk for a moment about Bill Cosby. He has announced that he's going out on tour. Uh, number one, uh, number one. He's he going to prop he, him up. He can't stand up, so it's got to be sit-down comedy. Okay? And secondly, he can't see. He's blind. Is he really? Yes. Yeah. And he, you know, he, he uh, the question is, what's he going to do for an act? Just sit in a chair and talk. And talk about, I guess, his time in per prison. He's doing yeah. a documentary on his life, including his prison years. Uh, yeah. Well, Ollie, well, Ollie North did that for years. You're right. You're absolutely yeah. right. Mm -hmm. You know, but I mean, I think in his case, uh, I think he feels, you know, he's always been a kind of had a teacher mentality because he studied, he became a teacher. Right. Uh, and I think he thinks he's going to teach people something about his time in prison. Except Oliver North, North, without a doubt, was a, was a, was convicted of a crime. Yeah. Well, I mean, so was, uh, so was uh, Cosby, but they found that yeah, but they didn't reverse the charges on. Cosby. Well, they got, he his reverse his I mean, reversal the, his reversal was not based upon innocence, but upon what they considered the illegality of the of the trial. That right, beyond they, a reason. They were admitting as evidence stuff that he had uh, plead pled to and right. agreed to plead to in a uh, civil suit, and you can't take what you said in a civil suit and use it against you in a criminal sanction, and. Uh, there was a deal made with the district attorney at that attorney general of the state at that time, and then the new attorney general came in, decided to charge him, didn't check first to see if this deal had been made, and so basically, well, Cosby got screwed. I mean, I hope somebody gave him drugs first, uh, but you know, uh, loosen but things up. Did you have your hand up, Jeff? Uh, Cosby, all of a sudden. Uh, I heard him on the TV the other day. Did you really? Yeah, and it wasn't him. I mean, it was his old shows. Oh, his old shows. Well, all of a sudden, they're on. They're being added. Syndication again. Were they taken off? Yeah. I think they I'm were. I'm sure they were. I'm sure no station would want to play a Bill right. Cosby show. Yeah. But they now that this has happened, they put them back on. In syndication, right? That's yep. very interesting. It's yeah. very interesting, as well they should have. I don't think they should have taken them off, to be honest with you. I mean, if they were funny before he got found guilty, they're funny afterwards, too. They have nothing don't, to do with... Don't they have to pay him every time they run one of those? Yeah, less and less and less. And by now, he gets maybe three cents every time it's played. No. okay. Yeah. But three cents here, three cents there, pretty soon you're talking a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, that's... Listen, that's smart, the way. Jack. That's the way. Over the years, I've made bit money off of Bill Maher. Yeah, you know, uh, because of my announcing on comedy tonight uh, on uh, uh, HBO's one uh, one night stand, and uh, I I did the whole first season, and the only one they run now is Bill Maher because he's on HBO. So every year I get a check for seventy one dollars. For my, uh, for you my, don't even get cost of living increases. No, not at all. And I just wish they run some of the other shows that were better comedians on than uh, Bill Maher. You know, Bill Maher was a. I, I've told the story before, but I can tell it to you quickly again because it's worth telling. When we were doing the one night stands, I was doing the warm up for the shows, and then I did the announcing on it. And I was doing the warm up. Uh, which was, uh, you do a warm-up, you tell a few jokes, you get people to applaud so you can get some applause, get them to laugh a little bit so you can get some laughs, so that if they have to, like, have some of that in the show that they need, they've got it, you did it, you got the, you know, got the applause and everything. So I, I told a couple of jokes about things and so on, and, you know, they did okay, but I warmed up the crowd. He calls me into his dressing room. And he has the audacity to say to me, Alex, um, do you do any political in your opening, 
in your warm-up? And I say, well, yeah, I do a little bit. Like, how many here like Clinton? How many here like so-and-so? You know, and everybody applauds or boos or whatever. And uh, I said, so I, I, I do that. He says, don't do it. I said, why? He says, I do political. And I said, excuse me, Bill, but I understand you're making $20,000 for this show tonight. And I'm getting 150. I said, all things considered, follow me, motherfucker. And I walked Ugh. out. <laughs> He's a substandard comedian. He, he's not, he, that, he's um, not that great. He's okay, but he's not great. He's not, you know. What was that movie he did that was so. Oh, uh, 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 Cannibal was... Women, the Cannibal Woman. Thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cannibal, uh, 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 cannibal women of the something piranha jungle or something like that. <laughs> Didn't that win Academy Awards for best? No, Actually, it wasn't best. a bad picture, oddly enough. No. But uh, no. Amazon women of the something jungle. I can't remember what the something. Any do some religious movie too? What? Can you do a religious movie too? Religious Oh well, he, yeah, 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 yeah that, that was a documentary. But yeah. Adrian Barbeau was in that movie with the cannibal women, and uh, I'm trying to. I'm just. Oh, that's a winner right there. Yeah, yeah, she's got a nice rack. Yeah, well, I I um, I interviewed Adrian Barbeau once, and I said, uh, "I've seen you totally naked for an hour." <laughs> and she said, "What?" And I got off three times. And while I, I said, saw you. "I said, yeah, you were doing a show off Broadway called Stag Movie." And in an hour of that film, of that show, you're naked for the entire time on stage. And she says, "Busted." <laughs> she had done the Bobby show. Said, I remember you. You were the one that was drooling right in the front. Seat. Oh, I saw this woman. I went up. Oh, Jeez, you know, uh, and oh, she's not God. taking her clothes off. Did I die and do something right? You know. Really? I mean, it was amazing. Yes, John. Yeah, um, a, a friend of yours I read in the newspaper passed away yesterday did you n notice that what who robert downey senior senior oh, oh senior. really yeah. really yeah, the filmmaker yeah, yeah. You, oh. you knew i remember you interviewing him a couple times on uh yeah. live one of five yeah. i used to have breakfast with him and he used to bring his little kid along yeah oh. and uh i uh as he grew up i began to think was i nice to him <laughs> uh <laughs> but no his kid was about Eight years old, I think, at the time, and it was Robert Ooh, Downey Jr. Jr. Yeah, it was Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Yeah, yeah. Iron Man. Yeah, he's the only guy that ever asked me to be in a movie uh, of his, and then he couldn't afford to fly me out to be in it. I was supposed to be in Greaser's Palace, which was one of his. Uh, he's rather doing movies, and he's good at a lot of his movies. Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. Or he's doing Time in Jail. But not anymore. Not for the last twenty years. Where have you he's been? Out. He's all dry now. Yeah, he's he's, he's dry. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Anyway, that's it. Our uh, our show is uh, coming to a a uh, a close here. Uh, Brian Neary, always wonderful to have you there. I always like it when you're not upset and you can come on here. So tell your kids to treat you better. Damn it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Charlie, great to see you. Jeff, always great to see you. John Larkin, Alan, and of course, Kevin, my buddy. Thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate it. Everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye back at you, okay? There we go. There they go. And here I am, full screen. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. He'll be here taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll be back again. Uh, let's see here. Well, I guess I got to come back and do it. I'm, I'm trying to stall here. I've actually gotten off short. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, we're going to... Uh, goodbye. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always... Oh, I'm going to hang up on these people. I forgot to hang up on them. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, please, if you haven't been vaccinated, don't be a dope. Go out and get vaccinated, okay? Okay, I'll get vaccinated. Go get vaccinated. 
And have a nice night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.